uh, Havering Council, uh, this is in London, they have now basically, they came out yesterday and said that they were going to uh, stop their display of their Hanukkah candles this year after a backlash or a potential feared backlash. Uh, this was all down to the conflict in Israel, Gaza. They were saying that the lighting uh, of these candles, the menorah, would perhaps inflame tensions. Something that I then found very peculiar is that what happened next was that the Muslim Association uh, of Britain got involved because it really did get a huge reaction and response, as you can imagine, this um, uh, council's decision. People were very, very, very upset about it. So I, say, I was quite pleased to see this. This was the Muslim Association of Britain. They said there was concern, they were concerned about these reports uh, cancelling the planned lighting of the Hanukkah uh, menorah. They found it offensive to our Jewish brothers and sisters. And I have to say, I agree with this bit massively. No one should be afraid to practice, celebrate or express their faith in our country. A menorah celebrating a Jewish festival will not inflame tensions and cause offence. And they were calling on the council to reconsider their decision and not help feed hate and anti-Semitism in Britain. Anyway, they went on to say that they will offer their stewards to ensure the smooth running and security at any event. And they would stand shoulder to shoulder with British Jews in the face of the scourge of anti-Semitism. We'll hear here to that. So anyway, there's been some meetings had today um, with various different rabbis and Jewish groups. And now the council, quite sensibly, if you ask me, they've U-turned on that decision and now now said indeed uh, that their plans will go ahead. Now, Sean, you actually live uh, in this council area, so what do you make to it all? I, there's two things I say. The council made their initial decision, I would imagine, in view of all the tension that there's been in London. So for viewers who don't live in London, with all the marches, Tommy Robinson being arrested, people having to be pulled off statues, etc., the council are probably thinking we have a small Jewish community in Haver and we do not want them to be focused on, on or come under the attention. So they made that decision. Now, for the Muslim Council of Britain to say, look, we don't like that, I think is correct. It, that, that that's the, certainly their stance on it. And one of the things that makes Britain one of the greatest countries on the face of the planet is that you can worship whoever you like publicly as well. So to maintain that, I think it's important. But I have to support the council here. We have a faith forum in, in Havering. The council would have spoken to them. They'd have spoke to local rabbis, local priests, etc., and come to an agreement about it. But when a council tries to reduce tension in the area, I think that's the correct thing to do. But you see, I mean, there's a lot to unpick there. I mean, I don't know what the arrest of Tommy Robinson's got to do with it. The fellow was only eating his breakfast. Yeah. And if you, if you ask me, I mean, that was a, an example of one of the finest examples of two-tier policing that I've seen for a long time. But because it's a live court case, I don't want to be done for contempt of court, so I can't really get into that story. But, you know, you cannot wander around in society threatening other people, right? You just can't. That's not what society is all about. And if people um, are going to do that, or the potential to do that, the reaction from the council surely shouldn't be to change their ways. So you know what? To avoid them lot kicking off, we're just not going to light our candles, we're not going to do our celebration, because surely that's fueling that. No, there is, so look, the response from the council will always and should always be to reduce tension to keep people safe locally. Now, should we acquiesce or not? No, but we have other agencies, the police, for instance, to deal with those sort of things. And I know the council would have been confronted with a community that is scared. If you're Jewish in London now, you are terrified and the council wouldn't want to shine a light on you unless they felt that you were prepared to, to deal with whatever came and that's why they probably made the decision of course I wasn't there I'm just I'm just I'm just supposing what they would do but what I do like is that people have come together and said no actually this is about the, the ability in this country to worship whoever you like and I'm proud of our local council for standing up for local people and also the local people saying no we're going to deal with this Paul. I think it was a bad, 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 bad decision. There are always flashpoints in the world, in the Middle East and elsewhere. Um, India and Pakistan are always at each other's throats over Kashmir. I can't imagine the council would have banned either, you know, something celebrating Diwali, something associated with Eid, for example, in that particular case. I don't think they've probably done it in the past whenever those flashpoints have occurred. As I say, flashpoints in the Middle East all the time. So somebody somewhere sat and thought, um, this is the right thing to do, uh, you know, to alienate effectively the, the Jewish community and to make them, whether deliberately or otherwise, it probably wasn't intentional, but nonetheless to almost make them scapegoats for, you know, what Israel is doing in Gaza at the moment and saying because of what Israel is doing, uh, you know, you're not going to be able to, to celebrate what you would normally celebrate. I'm not saying they intended that way, but the perception probably among Jewish people was, hold on a second, they, they, they seem to be punishing us for what's 
what's going on over there in, in Gaza. So it seems to me no one really thought this through. Um, and it's had an impact on the Jewish community. And I agree, it's good to see the Muslim Association of, of Britain come out and say, look, we'll, we'll steward it if necessary to make sure that this can go ahead. I'm not particularly in favour generally of councils kind of having a public policy where they promote different faiths and they promote different cultures. I mean, people, of course, are entitled to their faith and to their culture. I don't understand why we make such a thing sometimes. I'm not talking about this incident particularly, but as a country of promoting so much kind of separate and, and difference, uh, but then we get into the whole debate about multiculturalism and particularly state-sponsored multiculturalism, whether it's a good thing, whether it's a bad thing, whether it brings people together, well, whether it I, fragments I, people. I think it tends to fragment people. Not that I don't believe that people have got the right to practice their faith. They absolutely have. I, 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 I disagree, in, I disagree on two levels. Freedom. Of course, the, the, the state-sponsored multiculturalism was a very left-wing thing, which was, was about dominant people people's political space. But when it comes to faith, one of the things that this country has had a proud history of, people of faith always rubber get along nicely together and actually are very good at including people of no faith. The idea that faiths in this country at each other's throat is simply isn't true. And that council should promote that because for many communities, particularly in a place as diverse as London, faith is the first place that people can meet another community. So I'm very up for councils doing the same, schools do it, all, all, all kinds of stuff. But I go back to, to, to the council in Havery I know that they wouldn't have done this to scapegoat the, the Jewish community. What they would have done is for was very few Jewish people with a small Jewish community. They could be vulnerable. There have been massive tensions in London. Let's just lower that tension. But there wouldn't have been, I mean, I know Romford, um, Sean, like mm -hmm. you do, there wouldn't have been tensions in Havering, I'm pretty sure, between... I don't think there is a great big Muslim community in Havering, certainly when there I... There is now. 6.2%. Yes, there's a yeah. massive... Th that's the point. If, if you look at Havering and right down into Redbridge... But it's not as big as some... It's not as big yeah, as but some, it's particularly very, in London. It's, it's, in London, very, it's, big it's big very, very, very big. And we've had a traditional um, Jewish community there that isn't quite as big. Now, we've had little to no trouble at all. 1,300 uh, Jews in um, Havering um, and 6.2%. So 0.5% of the population um, in Havering are Jewish and 62 are Muslim. Yeah, so again, the, the, the communities are, are very it's different sizes. It's some London But, but it's big enough. I mean, if you're the council, you don't care, rightly so, what happens elsewhere. Your job is your ground. And they would have just been thinking, I imagine, let's make sure we don't have any flare-up here. But, but the history of the place, if there had been marches in Havering over recent weeks or months or even years, if there had been tensions breaking out, if there had had, had been altercations on the street, if there had been, um, you know, real conflicts between the Muslim and Jewish communities. I can understand then a council saying, look, we probably need to take the heat out of this thing. We don't want to do anything that's incendiary, that inflames the situation. Um, but to my knowledge, none of that sort of stuff has ever gone on in Havering. And the idea that I think the Muslim community would have would, I'm not saying you're saying this, by the way, but the idea that the Muslim community would have would have kicked up if they'd have gone ahead with this, you know, small celebration. Look, look. Um, I just think you, is, you, you is could you could be right. Top. You could be right. But and that's why they've U-turned. Let's yeah, be honest. They've yeah, U-turned no, because U -turn, they realise they've U-turned because decision. they've got some. They've U-turned because they've got some support. And I wouldn't use the term U-turn. I hate that when a council has listened, when a politician has listened, we say U-turn to embarrass someone. They've made a different decision because they've got some support. But the point is, a council would be wanting to not have something happen. And that's the most important because once the genie's out of the bottle, the council would have been in all kinds of trouble. People would have been in all kinds of pressure. And when the spotlight is gone, we in Havering would still have to have dealt with it. So I still feel like the council made the right decision in the beginning and they made the right decision once they realised they're going to get some support. But I, I'm, I just, I, I don't agree with what you're saying. So you're, I get the concept of what mm. you're saying, which is the council want to keep everybody safe. And mm. I get that. And it's a noble aim, good high five to all of everyone there. But... What you're suggesting is that the council sit there and go, right, so there's a risk here. So let's let's not beat around the bush. What they were sitting there saying is that they fear that there is um, a, a collection of radical Islamists that are going to take offence at this Jewish celebration. That's what that's what the bottom line is. Let's not beat around the bush. They're not terrified that some random uh, Christian, because it's not a Christmas tree, is going to come and kick off at these lights. That's not what this is about. It's about people that have got the issue on the Israel uh, Gaza uh, conflict and that they're importing that conflict into these streets. The council's then sat there and gone, right, there's this uh, fear, there's
there's a collection, they must think there's a collection of radical Islamists that are going to damage this Jewish celebration. So what they've then done is they've then cancelled the Jewish celebration to pander to those fanatics. Which which just briefly briefly is exactly what the FA did after the Hamas attacks on the 7th of October with the with the Israeli flag over the, the, on the arch, when, when the Wembley stadium. Flag. But hold on, the but hold on. And they specifically said, the FA, it was because of what the some people in the local community, what their reaction would be to it. And let's be blunt, they were talking about you know mm. radical Muslims in, in Brent or wherever. There's no point glossing over that. What their reaction would be to it. And they decided on that basis not to, not to display the flag. And the danger is when you get into backing down and not doing things that you would otherwise do as a public body because you are worried that certain elements of the community are going to kick up, um, then you're giving into that. You're I'll tell you, I'll tell you what, there's, there's you two, there's, never do that. There's two things, that, there's two things I'd, I'd, I'd say to that. The council probably won't sit there just thinking about radical Muslims. How many people went to those marches? Never, they've never been anywhere near the Quran. They're just out to cause trouble. They just support pa- Palestine because it suits them. People on the left, le- largely, let's use that term. And the council are thinking, we like to low profile this because actually we like to keep our Jewish community safe. They, they, they could be that. And it, it, it's, it's, I find it quite galling that people on the left would then say, well, you shouldn't be doing this and you shouldn't be doing that because we've had all kinds of things removed from British society because people on the left don't like it. Faith being one of them, you know, <laughs> faith being one of them. You, you, you can't do it in school, you can't do it anywhere because it might offend people. So the fact that the council... Well, well hang on, what faith has been removed from a school? Oh my gosh, it, you, tr- you, 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 uh, uh, then I'll give you a classic example. Teachers being turfed out of school for wearing a cross. Nurses being having the same thing happen to them. Yeah, have been told that they cannot keep their job if they want to wear that cross. So I feel like I, I'm on... So but where's that? Yeah. Who's the people that are offended by that cross? People on the left, people with no faith normally. And, and what's really interesting, in, the Muslim council's reaction is not a surprise to me. Because they'll always say, and, and consistently have said, people of faith should be able to practice their faith. They've been very good about that. Street preachers, you know, preaching from the Bible, reading particular verses, are, are very likely to be carted off in a police van. So, so I, think there, yeah. I think there's an element of True, truth. True, actually. What, yeah. I do remember what, that very uh, what, old fellow that was doing the Bible reading, and he was young. And we talk about two-tier thought. policing. There, there's an element of that going on with faith, actually, when, yeah, when you, yeah, you, look true, at the, you look at the treatment of Christians, which is the dominant mm. religion still in this yes. country, and which so much of our heritage is rooted in um, and it's almost like you know you you can't um, you can't demonstrate your Christianity in an overt way without someone saying hold on a second you know you're being reactionary or you're being hostile to other faiths or you're being exclusive at the same time the same people are very very happy to indulge other faiths precisely and that that is two tier well there you go look so that event has been reinstated now so in my mind anyway credit to the council for reinstating it also credit uh, to the Muslim Association of Britain there that did say that they would stand shoulder to shoulder with uh, their Jewish brothers and sisters to help ensure that that event does go ahead safely.